Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Claire. I am so excited. Firstly, because I haven't paint poured for over, good, well over a week because of Christmas and New Year and, and seeing people. The second, because it's a commission. So a few weeks ago, um, I did a 80 by 50, um, quite a large piece. Um, it was three puddles, one on top of each other. I'll include a picture of that, that painting here if I remember. I'll also include the link for that painting in the description so you can see the original piece if you'd like to. Um, so I did this painting and it's sold. Somebody contacted me and wanting, wanted to buy it, so it's sold. So they've now contacted me and said they'd like me to do two matching pieces to go side by side. So if you imagine it's an 80 centimetre long by 50 deep, I'm now going to do two 50 centimetre square paintings. So one either side of this long painting. The colours are amazing. Turquoises um, and a goldy bronzy colour. Um, so straight pours. I think I'm going to do two cups, two puddles on each canvas. Um, I just can't wait to get started. So let me show you the colours. So these are the colours. They are all exactly the same as the previous pour, except for the iridescent pink. I added pink last time and it showed a little bit on the painting, but not much. So the customer has said, let's leave the pink out because she wouldn't want it to, to take over. So that gives me these six wonderful colours. So I have got um, Amsterdam white. This one, it's a mixture and this was the same as the original. It's a mixture of Montmartre gold and Amsterdam bronze. So that's the Montmartre gold and then Amsterdam bronze. So it's just a bit darker than um, the normal gold. This one here, it's a mixture of two colours, Pebio Studio Acrylics Payne's Grey and Pebio Studio Acrylics Prussian Blue. So it's a really lovely deep colour. This one, Graduate um, Acrylic, De La Rowney Thalo Turquoise. Um, this iridescent turquoise here, Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Blue Green, and then also Pebio Silver. Um, let me just try and show you the consistency. Nice and thick, but it flows really nicely. It's mixed with PVA glue and water pouring medium. So I'll put the recipe for that in the description of the video. So that's thickened up slightly. I might just add a little bit more water to that one being iridescent it, they just tend to thicken up more actually and that was even thicker because you can see the trail on, on, the, on the surface it lasts quite a while compared to that one that one I'm happy with it that's lasting a few seconds um, so I mixed these a few hours ago so it's quite good to now come back just recheck the consistency that one's fine and then the white I mixed the white to the same ratio, but I had to add more paint because it was just too runny. The white paint is much runnier than the other colours. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to layer up four plastic pint cups, so two for each canvas. Um, I'm thinking about doing a full cup and then half a cup. Um, or... No, I probably, I probably just do four equal cups. So I'm going to layer them all up in the same way. This is the order. So I've separated the turquoise colours and the blue, um, and I've separated the gold, silver, and the white. So I'm going to go this order, but I'm just going to start with a tiny bit of white in the bottom of each cup, um, just a little drizzle. The reason I'm doing this is I quite like a tiny bit of white to come out of the cup last. So that's the very center of the puddles, but not too much. I've done I've done it before when I've just added too much white. So I, I'm literally just going for a drizzle. Just re, again, rechecking the consistencies of these. Ooh. the silver the silver is too thick so a tiny splash more water I always give um, recipes and measurements in weight of what I use but the reality that's my guide but the reality is that some paints are just thicker than others so the metallics especially this silver is so much thicker I'm actually adding a bit more water so I use the recipe I've put in the description as a as a guide that's always how I start I like to weigh things 
but then like the white I said I just added a bit more paint to thicken it up but then the metallics I'm adding more water to thin it down so um you do look at the recipes but also do bear in mind that it then they're not exact it depends on the brand of paint depends on the color so I'm going to run the paint down the side of the cup What I've tried to achieve with the consistency of this paint is a nice flowing paint. So it's nice and fluid. It's quite nice and smooth, but it has to be thick enough because if it's if it's not thick enough, the um, colours will just blend and merge far too much. So I want the colours to remain separate and distinct, but runny enough to flow. So it's quite a balance. Um, So as I said, the canvases I'm using are 50 centimetres squared. I've got two here, one here, one to the, to the side of me here. So I've put push pins in, I've levelled the canvases. Um, so I'm ready to start pouring. When I was mixing my paints, I accidentally mixed up the Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Green Blue as opposed to the Blue Green. So I actually, I was really cross with myself. I'd actually mixed this up by mistake. So I've got a whole... A whole pot full of um, the wrong colour here. They're very similar. Um, if you look at the, um, in fact, you can see. Hopefully, you can see there that you can see the difference. But if you look at the just the tubes of paint, they're actually very similar, and it's often quite difficult to tell which is which. You have to really read the label. Um, so anyway, I've got this green. So uh, what I'd like to do is put down a puddle. The idea is that the puddle won't show, the colour of this won't show, but it would just help the paint to flow over the canvas nicely. So if I put some of this down first, I can then also use this as a flow extender. So in some ways, it's actually quite a good thing that I made this up by mistake because I'm actually going to use it. Right, so I'm just going to put a little puddle in the centre. And then I'm just going to tilt that round a little bit. Just to get the um, bit of the centre of the canvas covered. And then I can pour into that. I poured the colours down this, this point here. So I'm going to pour them out of that point there. And what I will be doing, is I'll be pouring, but I'll also be twisting around. And I'm going to try and do this quite slowly. I've, I've re-watched the original pour for, um, for this um, in this range. And I did it quite quickly. So I'm actually going to try and do it quite slowly. So I'm going to do one puddle and then I will probably pour another puddle on top. Um, so let's let's start.
Right, there are some beautiful effects in here. I definitely didn't quite pour it in the centre. There is quite a lot of paint there. But not enough to get to the edges. So I'm going to use my second cups. So my question is, do I pour it into the centre? Or do I pour it? Last time I poured it into the gold. Because I just don't want to destroy all of this. It's gorgeous. Right, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to pour over the second paddle over here to break this area up. Because I really like this. I'm going to put some flow extender down now, I think. Because it's already rolling over itself over here. So let's just put some of this down. Give a different effect though what i could do is just twist this round Right, I really hope that was the right decision. Um, what I'm loving is these, the centres have come out absolutely perfectly, absolutely gorgeous. Really pleased with those. Um, I am going to have another gold line, I think, through the centre because of the way I've poured it, which is what happened with the last one. Um, right, let's give this a really good torch. I'm just going to fill up my uh, torch. Right, well, this is really heavy. There's a lot of paint on here. But that's a really good position to be in. If you have a lot of paint, it just means you can really have much more control over the composition of the painting. If there's not much paint on here, you have no choice. You just have to stretch it whichever way you can. So all I'm doing to start with is just tilting it around, not losing any yet. I'm just tilting it around just to stretch the design out as much as I can before I lose any. Oh, I might lose a bit there. Right, the weight is here. Let's just come off that corner first because the weight of the paint is down there. It's amazing, it suddenly feels so much lighter as soon as it goes off over the edge.
Right, this is looking gorgeous. I am so happy so far. So that was obviously the, the first puddle. The centre is still there beautifully, but the majority of that, the rest of it is now gone. Let's give it another torch. I absolutely love it. Oh my goodness. I am so happy with it. I'm not sure there's anything I would change. Now all I've got to do is another one the same, or not the same, but that's going to match. So let's just bring it back very slightly more this way. I think I'm done. I think I'm going to leave it. So I'm just going to finish the, the corners, wipe the edges, and then um, I'll get the other canvas. In fact, I'll, I'll show you close up first and then I'll start the other canvas. I'm so incredibly happy with the composition. And I think the main reason is because you've got this amazing dark line of blue through the centre with the gold. So you've got some colours there that have not muddied at all. And I think the reason for that is because that is the very edge of this puddle. So at the edges, it, it just doesn't muddy as much. Um, it does muddy near the centre, which um, shows up just here. Oh, why won't it focus? But thank goodness it does muddy because look at the beautiful colours that make that result. It just blends absolutely beautifully. Look at the depth in that. Oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. The gold, I'm really pleased I put the panes grey, the blue against that next to that gold. It just looks like little shadows around the fingerlings around the edge. That bit there is it's like a little blue lagoon. It's beautiful at the edge. And then you've got this kind of river running through the centre. Oops, sorry, it's not focusing again. That is so many details. And then this is the centre of the second puddle. Look at that turquoise. I've never done that before. I've never put turquoise next to white in the centre of a straight pour. Normally just gold, but that looks so, so pretty. And look at this. You can see how three... Um, it's how... Um, transparent some of these colours are. You can see all the colours through the colours, if that makes sense. So you can see there's a lot of gold in there with the blue and the white. So when this is dry, it's just going to sparkle. It's going to look beautiful. So there we go. One down. Oh, it's down here. One to go. So canvas two, I'm just going to do this in exactly the same way. I'm running out of this green, but I've got a few other bits of leftover paint, which I'll use for the flow extender. Let's just use that just to get started again. I've also got quite a lot of paint. I don't know if you can see it from the angle um, on the worktop here. So what I might do. In fact, I think I'm going to mop, I'm going to scrape that up now because I could use that as a flow extender. Um, all I do is use my spatula. It's a bit wet. Um, and look how well this just all scrapes together. And look at all that lovely paint. 
So if I wasn't going to use this as a flow extender, I would be scraping this up and keeping it and using it for another pour because look at that blue colour, it's beautiful. But actually, if I can just scrape this up now and then I can use this, it just it just saves having to mix up any more flow extender if I need any. And of course, I'll get all these drips from the second canvas as well, so I will have this colour at the end. It's so elegant, it's so pretty, it just glides, it's just, it's got so much movement to it. It's quite different from the other one. Um, definitely I think a bit more gold, although I think looking at them both, I'll show you them both in a second, the balance is actually really pretty good between them. Um, I think they work really well as a pair. And then hopefully when they're put with the original painting as a, as a triptych. Look at that. It's just, it blows me away every time, the detail you can get in a straight pour. I think they are one of the most exciting forms of fluid art because you really just don't know what it's gonna look like. You can't plan it, you can't predict it. Um, you know, and sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it just makes a mess, but I am so happy with these. I really, really feel that they match the the original so as a three as a triptych i think it's going to look great i love that white and turquoise in the center there and the the gold and that blue and then just look at all these lines right let me show you them both together then excuse the mess on my table there they both are. So you've got the obvious blue line through this one, which you don't have with this, but there's quite a lot of blue down the bottom here. You've got the diagonal line going through them both, but the diagonal line is very different. They're both curly, um, curvy, but both different. So I think as a pair, these are gonna work. Let's just stay from this angle. Yeah, you can see more of the darker blue. Sorry about the glare of the light. Actually, it looks more there. You look, you can see a darker blue line going through the centre here, just from a different angle. Great. I'll be back when they're dry. I can't wait to see these hanging in real life. I can't wait to see them with the big painting. Um, I'm so happy with them. They are so, so similar, and yet they are both completely different. So as a pair, they work, I think they work so well. And I think as a triptych, oh, I just can't wait to see them all in a line. Um, so I'll show you the first one first, this one here. Um, let's go in really close. Um, they've dried really nicely. There, there was a lot of paint on this canvas, um, but there is no cracking. The paint has just dried perfectly. Um, you can just see every single little fold, every detail. 
dried absolutely perfectly. You can see some of the shimmer there. In fact, I'll show you the, the shimmer. Can you see, let's just focus it. There, can you see that the gold is shimmering? There's lots of turquoise shimmering. It's so, so pretty. Um, and that's before varnishing. So I will varnish it with um, Liquitex High Gloss and that will just give it an even prettier shine and shimmer. Um, I love these little bits, these obscure bits at the edge. And then the contrast, so you've got such a white pale section there compared to this really dark moody section here. I think these are my favourite cells. They're... If you call them cells, they're just they're just such pretty little details. So that was the first one. And then move over to the second one. And I love the way it does this. So I, I tipped that bit of the paint off over the canvas and it leaves these little um, sort of peaks in the paint. And again, you've got such contrast, white next to the darker blue, next to the gold. The gold and that really deep blue work perfectly because it does look like little shadows around the edge of the gold fingerlings. And I love my centre. So happy with that bright turquoise centre. And then if you just look so closely, if you actually look at all these lines, they're just beautiful. So there they both are. So when, when they're hanging, once the customer has them and when they're hanging, I will hopefully get a photograph of all three together, which I will put onto my Facebook um, and Instagram to show you. But there you go. Um, please let me know what you think. Do leave me a comment. I'd love to know what everybody thinks of these. Um, please do subscribe to my channel. Um, if you like them, please hit the thumbs up button. Great. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.